Hey guys, Double here, and welcome to a new Double's Opinions. This time I have someone else with me. Hey. And this is Polka Artist. Yay. Yep. So, basically what we're going to be talking about is five things that we want X and Y to have, and five things we don't want it to have. Okay. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. So we came up with this list yesterday. They're in really no particular order. We're not saying the game will suck if it doesn't have all five things. Or, yeah. or it will suck if it has one of the five things that we said we don't want. We're just saying that those are things that we thought of that we want. Anything else to add before we start? And No, let's go straight to it. Okay, so the first thing we got was uh, return the secret bases with street pass enabled. So basically, the Gen 3 ones, not the Gen 4 ones, because those were weird and highly limited. Yeah, the uh, the Gen the Gen 4 wasn't that way. You had to go under. Was it underground? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I did like the running motion in that um, the the tag game. Um, but yeah, I stick to the ones from Gen 3. The reason that I prefer Gen 3's secret bases is. They're a lot bigger. You can add a lot more stuff to them. And when you mix records, which could possibly just be done with Street Pass because it's 3DS, um, you could battle the trainer and whatever team they happen to have. So that could add for a lot of replayability to the game. Yeah, it's um, a lot because of the new 3DS capabilities. It just makes it... Um, there's a lot more stuff, more, much more stuff that can be added, um, and it's just more easier and compatible with a 3DS. Yeah. Um, I mean, personally, with this, with the secret bases, with the whole 3D, uh, if it's on the top screen, which I'm sure it will be, it would. Um, I mean, any Poké dolls that you've got in there will look really cool in 3D. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Um, yeah, because. There was a lot. The whole, I think, the main aspect of secret bases in Gen Generation Three was the Poké dolls. I mean, I personally didn't care for those flags or those little things that you stepped on, but the dolls were really cool. Yeah. Uh, anything else to add to secret bases? Uh, not really. Uh, except just this is something that's hopefully promising with the ability of customizable clothing. They might, yeah. you know work something out with that you might be able to customize yourself in a secret base it might be almost like a mini house so okay so the second thing we had was a huge regional pokedex with the ability to catch them all i'm assuming by ability to catch them all we meant like between the two versions not yeah between the two all versions 700 um, whatever in x and all 700 or whatever in y no that defeats the uh, the whole objective but yeah, um, uh, personally, I really, for all the, the games, the latest ones from like Heart Gold onwards, I've really wanted the ability to catch them all in just either one game or between the two versions. Um, it, I just, I, I don't mind trading online, but I think for some people and for me, I would prefer not to and just catch them all myself. So this is what I kind of want, and I don't mind if it's like a deck after I've been in the Elite Four or something along those lines. But as long as there's generally even more Pokemon in, in this uh, these two versions, or if there's all of them, like all 700 plus. Yeah. Um, something I'd just like to quickly add to, I guess it would be the subcategory, I don't know. Um, a way to block out those stupid trades, like, a Jolteon, and then they're expecting a level nine and under Dialga or something. Oh yeah, that that does get onto the whole thing of I don't like the fact that if I'm trading some, I was trading, uh, looking for specific Pokemon for Heart Gold, and it came to the case where people were wanting legendaries at like level 100 or starters at level 100. The trades need to be more realistic and almost like have a filter system where you can't actually ask for something so ridiculous. Yeah, like, make it so the Pokemon you're asking for has to be within 10 levels or something from the Pokemon you're giving. Yeah, definitely. And just to get onto the huge regional Pokedex, um, 
I think almost everyone can agree that Black and White One and Diamond and Pearls poke er, sort of had a l lot of repeat Pokemon just because their regional Pokedexes were both so small. Uh, like, Black and White, I think until the second gym, basically all you were fighting were the Monkeys, Patrat, Purloin, and Lillipop. Yeah, um... Yeah, I think that's generally... They do generally, um... A lot of them, and at the start of the games, was the fact that the same Pokemon was repeating itself over and over again. So, it would give more variety, actually add in more. Yeah. Um... <coughs> So we don't see a Bidoof again, or a Pidoof, or a Lillipup, like you said. Like, Black and White 2, that was fine. There were, like, I think the first, up until the first gym, but that's just because it's the first three beginning routes, you had, like, the same Pokemon. But then after that, it pretty much changed completely what Pokemon you were finding. Yeah, I mean, weren't they, like, interesting Pokemon? Like, like was it, is it Rylou? Yeah. Is that how you say it? And um, wasn't that at the beginning? Because I thought yeah, something like that is just what gives it. It just gives it a bit more variety, and uh, that's just something that they should include or, you know, even work on for X and Y. Yeah, and hopefully they get it right the first time and don't have to, like, do it, fix it in, like, a Platinum or Black and White 2 again this time. Yeah, yeah, because if, if there's so-called, if Z is going to be the possibility, then, yeah, it shouldn't be something like that. It shouldn't be... Um, moved across into Z, it should be a separate separate game. Something else I'd just like to quickly add to the regional Pokedex. I want all Pokemon in that Pokedex to be, like, within the main region, because, as I pointed out yesterday with Slackoth in Black and White 2, you can't get anyone in the Slackoth family until the after game, but they're still in the main regional Pokedex. So I don't see the point in that. Yeah. Um... That could also apply to some people who might. I, it's a very small possibility or probability, or whatever. But small, uh, a small number of people might not even play the game to actually complete the game. They might just generally do it to catch them all and maybe trade and battle. Yeah. So. Well, do you have anything else on that to say? Uh, no, I think that was a reasonable amount of discussion. <laughs> okay. Um, next thing we want is a mini game that takes full advantage of the 3DS's capabilities. So we were talking about this yesterday. The 3DS has a gyro sensor. It has an AR reader, Spot Pass, Street Pass, um, to give more depth in 3D, like how Mario 3D Land did. So we don't want something that's just boring, like the musicals, where you just stare at your screen for five minutes. And I never even I played that just for the story mode bit, but I never went back. Um, <laughs> I've and never seen anyone actually fully complete the musicals. Uh, that was the thing where you had to press like Y and A and stuff to jump and comp like you know do what the other Pokemon did and kind of that sort of like setup onto it. It was very. Um, it was very. It minimal didn't make sense. Effort. Yeah. Um, and then that po that pokey the pokey wood, which is like Hollywood, obviously, that as well. Nothing like nothing gimmicky or that is just literally shoving Pokemon into some sort of either real life setup. Because con if contests aren't mini games, but something almost in the same league as that for the 3DS just is what what we're looking for. The Pokeathlon from Heart Gold and Soul Silver was also pretty good. That that was good. I did enjoy that. Um, I, I played that a lot, actually. I was I had a lot of Pokemon that had a lot of like high um, medals and stuff in that area. So something along those lines, but just use all the capabilities of the 3DS. Use the gyro sensor for tilting, and you know use the uh, the AR cards, um, probably for just something like you know to see the Pokemon in you know almost real life, if you will. But yeah. just use all the capabilities. Don't make it something that could easily have been just used on the Nintendo DS. Or even Game Boy Advance. The musicals oh, yeah, probably that, that. could have easily been handled on Ruby and Sapphire. Yeah, the only difference was that the controls could have actually been used on the touchscreen. That was all that was added for that. Yeah. 
Uh, one other thing I'd like to quickly add, because of AR cards, we had a little discussion about this. Hopefully we won't take too much time talking about this here, but um, the possibility of uh, them adding some sort of code onto the Pokemon trading cards and you able to yep. scan that and use it either in this mini game or I don't know if they could just give a Pokemon to you through that. That would be kind of cheap. Maybe promotion on items, just something of some, you know, yeah. recognition or collectible or something. Maybe like a doll for your secret base of that. Yeah, Pokemon. yeah, of that. That 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 makes complete sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, fourth thing we have for things we want is multiple soundtracks. Now, this might confuse you how I said it, but basically what we mean is like how Heart Gold and Soul Silver had the Game Boy Player, I think it was called. Yeah, it was the Game um, Boy Player. Like that you got after I think you got it after getting all eight Kanto badges, and that basically reverted all the music to. 8-bit. Majority. I think it was the majority of it. But yeah, it um, put it back to 8-bit and it was very retro and nostalgic and it was just a... It, I actually used it more than in the actual current music that it was when I actually unlocked it and Same. it was just so so good to hear. Uh, I suggested just because I love orchestral uh, video game music to give you a violin and that changes all the music to orchestral. Yeah, uh, that, that'd be great. I mean, um, it doesn't have to be so much as retro music, but even multiple uh, different tracks for different areas. So you're not hearing the same loops or music. So if you were like in a forest, for example, and you hear the music repeating over and over again, maybe there was something that could change that. Um, and it'd be a different track or if you were in a secret base and you had a you know like a CD player and you could play music and if someone was in your base as well they could hear it that'd even be you cool know. if you could like play music from the 3DS's SD card oh oh, that'd be interesting because that could possibly the diverse in here but it could use the sound um, recorder you know from the yeah. 3DS and you could use that to record sounds and have that in your game yeah. It's, I think that that's one of the ones that is possibly the wishful thinking out of the lot. Yeah. Because I think they only did it for Heart Gold and Soul Silver because it was like a generation revamp of like the Gold and Silver, which was like probably one of the best out of the series. And because of the whole anniversary kind of thing. So that's probably why they input it, which is why it's wishful thinking that they'll do something like this for X and Y. Yeah, probably. Uh, but anyway, the last thing is a prop proper DLC, which would most likely take the form of Mystery Gift. Uh, in case you guys are unaware, the 3DS does offer DLC. I believe Fire Emblem and New Super Mario Bros. 2 are the only ones yeah. supporting it right now. Uh, yes, as of now, yeah. As of recording this, they might announce DLC at some point, or there might be some third-party game neither of us have, so we don't pay attention to it that got DLC or something. Um, but what we mean by this is, because the Meloetta event's currently going on for North America, I'm not sure about other parts of the world, and no stores in my area have it, so I can't get it. Which makes me really sad. But if it was over the eShop with DLC, I could. And knowing Game Freak, they probably would make it free for like the first two months. And then if they were to keep it, which I would prefer, charge like a dollar ninety nine or something. Yeah, that that's uh, reasonable because that's uh, in Europe or the UK. It's that would be roughly about one pound fifty, maybe less, and. That's reasonable for just saving you the time and effort to go out somewhere. Um, in my case, I'd have to go really far out to a Toys R Us that we only have like one of them so close, and it's like a, literally an hour there and back. Well, no, that's two hours. So yeah, just for a Pokemon, you know, it just makes it a lot more efficient. Yeah, and my mum won't just drive us out for any particular thing, so like we have to already be heading out there basically. To be yeah. for me to get it, 
like if a game's coming out, she'll most likely take us. But she won't just take us to get like one Pokemon and then come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, because time-wise, it doesn't take two seconds to get it through a trade. Or so, so it, it, I mean, it'll be a simple. You know, you go on the eShop, you see it there, and you download it, and it can be instantly in your game. Or maybe even download it onto the game and you battle it before you get it. Yeah. Which you know, some it doesn't have to be too as simple as downloading it. You know, they can be always you know, requirements as such. So, I think we're done with the things we want. Yeah, the only thing is we just really want them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now, five things that we don't want. The first thing is easy mini games where you do nothing, which we basically explained in yeah. the other one, but like, uh, something we want something more like the Pokeathlon or the contests where you actually do stuff in them. Yeah, and where they're actually rewarding. I mean, with the Pokeathlon, you could actually earn, like, you could purchase, like, I don't think you could purchase rare candies, but you could get fire stones, you could get all the stones, basically. Yeah. And it just needs to be something of, uh, just where it's not a pointless minigame, where it might even be a fun for a second, but it's still boring, you know, it needs to be either a little complex or just have something rewarding and actually maybe involved with the storyline. Just don't have it as a side storyline as it was with the musical and the Hollywood. Yeah. Well, I guess that's about it. We pretty much explained that. Um, next thing is stupid ways to transfer your Pokemon from 5th gen. Uh, like, the Pal Park was okay... It was kind of annoying to have to recapture your Pokemon, but it was still okay. But the Poke Transfer tool, I think it was called, from Black White, Black Two, White Two. I really didn't like that. Just how you had to like use a slingshot and capture your Pokemon jumping from bush to bush. Yeah, um I don't know much about the transfer. I, the only transfer I've done is from Palpad with Pal no, Pal Park, which was the one where you would get the GBS slot would be onto the NDS and then you would try and catch him again. Was that it? Yeah. You, yeah. That I actually I thought that was quite enjoyable, but it was so, somewhat annoying that I had to do six Pokemon every time and it was almost like just looping. Um, and you showed me the video of that slingshot, which that was ridiculous of like just having to slingshot a Pokemon jumping up and down, it was very, like, stupid and idiotic, really. I, I really didn't like that. What I'd like for, if they have to do some sort of stupid minigame or something, um, kind of like how the global link works, like, where they all appear in one place, you can see their overworld sprites, you just go up and talk to them. I'd prefer something like that. Or if they really want, the Pal Park would be okay. It is kind of annoying, especially when some Pokemon take a long time to find. Yeah. And you're, like, if it's a water type, you have no idea if they're in the ocean or the lake. Some are pretty obvious, like Kyogre, it's obviously the ocean. But there's others, like, I can't think of any right now. Maybe Blastoise, you're not sure exactly where he'd go or something. Yeah. Um, so if it was more of an improvement of the pal the pal park, if they were to almost use that setup and just improve it more or give give it more of a structure and make it a bit more efficient, so you don't have to get six Pokemon up. Maybe you can like do it in bulk and just chuck a load in like you know twelve or even more, and then just you know just do this massive run through of the the field or something. Just an improvement. Yeah. Um, but nothing nothing too silly or like a, almost like a mini game again. All with the all with these mini games, but they're just ridiculous. You don't need them. Something else I'd just like to uh, say for transferring: uh, make it so we can transfer Pokemon with HM moves. It's really annoying to go delete the HM move, then transfer it. Especially since the Pokemon has to be in your PC, so it's not like you're gonna get stranded. Like if they oh, yeah. if they could be in your party, then I could see it because like you could be surfing. You transfer your surfer. And that sort of strands you, or like on a desert island or something. Except 
you'd probably have a fishing rod so you could just catch a new water type, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, um, when I've been in situations like that, I mean, I always have a Pokemon that has that knows fly. I think every other move was um, in these latest gens. I always was more uh, cautious and didn't give them every single HM. But I've always had fly, so I've never been in that position where I couldn't get out of a sticky situation or something unless it was a cave. But um, it, it, they just need to be more of a setup so people can't just like give HMs to just one single Pokemon. Yeah. I don't give it more of a str more structure. That the, these little problems we're having, it's, it needs. You need to take time and think about it. <laughs> uh, okay, so next thing. We don't want to see pointless side quest characters multiple times. Uh, I'll let you explain this. Uh, right. Um, I personally, throughout the generations with the games where you, if you meet someone and if they need like a Pokemon to catch or if they want to do, they, uh, I think it was uh, Diamond and Pearl and you'd meet that character and go through a forest um, and you, you, I think you met like Team Plasma, is it Team Plasma? Oh no, Team Galactic. Yeah. Uh, you'd meet Team Galactic at that point and then you'd carry on outside the forest like I think you were taking her through. Um, and then you'd see her again, like the same woman, you'd see her along near the end of the game or after the game. And I just don't want to see repetitive characters shown. I would rather meet uh, different unique characters throughout the series um, as opposed to seeing the same character over and over again. If the character has some big involvement with the story, I like Bill. Uh, from red and blue and hard gold or silver, you know they have something big connection with the story, so they're not just going to shut someone like that off. Same with the professors, etc. But I don't want to see these minor characters shown over and over again because I don't find them interesting, and I just complete their quest just for the sake of completing it. Yeah, that uh, professor thing and stuff sort of leads us into the next one. The stupid beginning game tutorial. Oh my, that, uh, so boring. You know that one, guys, where you're walking and all of a sudden you're taught how to catch a Pokemon. Why? If it's not like nobody can figure it out, you lower its health and throw a Pokeball. They could probably do that a lot quicker by just mentioning it's easier to catch a Pokemon when its health is lower. Uh, yeah, because the you know, the fact is, most of the games actually do that. The character, the character you're talking to, always mentions it, but then for the sake of it, they show you how as well. Like it was kind of neatly done in Ruby Sapphire Emerald, where uh, you're with Wally, who is catching his first Pokemon. Yeah, because that was like sly, the slightly put it into the story. Yeah, and then you like. met Wally later on, and he actually became a strong trainer. But it wasn't just like. I'm going to show you how to catch a Pokemon because you're probably an idiot. <laughs> you know, you're, you're a ten-year-old kid who was like, dreamed of being Pokemon trainer all your life, and here you are, and yet you're getting taught how to catch a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. We thought that a good alternative to this would be, as I said, mentioning it, and also the, I think it's pronounced Tichi TV. Yeah, from, Teachy, as in Teacher, Teachy yeah, TV, yeah. From Fire Red and Leaf Green, um, where it's optional. You can watch all these tutorials, but you don't have to. Yeah, I mean, um, I think when it was on the GBA, I had a lot of problems pushing the wrong button, and it would um, it would load up. Um, but it was just good to have it there, and you could just ignore it and just play through with the game. You know, if you needed help learning how to get a Put it, attaching a TM or an item or equipped it and things like that just basic information you could use the TV and you'd get it early on in the game and you know that was it you didn't hear from it yeah and that again leads us into the fifth thing the slow beginning which I sort of touched on with the huge regional Pokedex part of that but where yeah. you're just fighting the same two or three generally weak Pokemon over and over again, a tutorial, uh, talking to the professor about 
catching all the Pokemon in the original Pokedex and becoming the champion, something you hear every game. Yeah. It would be kind of nice if they gave an option. Is this your first time, or have you played other Pokemon games before? And then if you say it's your first time, it will go through that. But if you say no, it will skip a lot of that. Yeah, that that would be a, a nice idea. I mean, it's, with the slow beginning, it's also... Um, I forgot what I was going to say now, but uh, just something unique um, and different, like Ruby and Sapphire and Emerald, you started in a van. Yeah. You know, not every not everyone should be, you wake up in your room, or you go downstairs, talk to your mum, go out, talk to Professor whoever, and, and then you start on your slow journey. It should be something different and unique. Maybe have optional ways to start off the game, possibly. You know, it doesn't have to be a linear setup at the beginning, but... Like yesterday, just... we mentioned um, a trainer coming from another region and being like X or XD and Coliseum where you already have your starter. Maybe like yeah. in the intro, you get to choose who you started with or something. Um, and they already have... I don't think they'd give it to you over level 5, but maybe give it some experience points or something. Yeah. Um, so it's obvious you've already been a trainer, and you're like Ash trying to get a fresh start or something. Yeah, it'd be just something different. And I know like they did like Black and White. Black and White 2 was meant to be like, you know, the fresh start of the um, Pokemon for gaming-wise. But X and Y can always be the fresh start being on the 3DS. So it could... Story-wise, this could be interesting if you see a, a, a this new character or two new characters, female and male, from a different region. The region doesn't have to be explained, but as long as you know that this this character's already got a Pokemon, you can pick and you come along and you can go off on your journey. You don't, you can do, you know, it cuts all the little stuff that you don't have to, you know, hear. Or we can just have that character come from Hoenn and give all the fanboys raging boners. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, in that situation, I actually don't. I don't mind if there's Gen Three is remade, but because everyone's asking for it, I've joined the bandwagon. Uh, this is sort of getting off topic, but I'm just gonna mention: uh, after Black and White Two came out, I never really expected a um, a Hoenn remake, just because they pretty much ruined their pattern right there. And, oh, with the sequel. Yeah, and like the DS was on a dying system, and that's where they decided to put Gen 5, which I don't understand why they put Gen 5 on the DS. I think it would have just caused connectivity issues if they released half of it on the 3DS. I'm not sure exactly on that, though. Mm -hmm. but, uh, um, yeah, basically, in slow beginnings, just speed them up and cut all the little, like, knit bits that don't need. Maybe introduce uh, important characters in a more interesting way, like how Looker was introduced in Platinum. I never experienced that. I never played Platinum. Uh, don't have but... that stupid side quest in Diamond Pearl and Platinum to get the three clowns to get oh, a that... catch. That that no that, that was that was a similar uh, in black and white where you would meet the the uh, three different dancers the break dancers and you would battle them and then in the end you were you picked um, an evolution stone didn't you for your pansage pansier or so. it was it, that was a similar setup um, I I think what they like to do is like bring the same like little events and put them into the next uh, generation game with a bit of a twist or a change. So they're using a lot of like cliche stuff that they've used before. So they should more unique material and side quests, events, etc. Something else we brought up yesterday that it, uh, we forgot to mention was the Oaks Parcel from Kanto Games. Like uh, how you go yeah. all the way to Viridian City, find out you're blocked, then you go, you have to go all the way back to Kanto or Pallet Town. Um, go all the way back to Viridian City. Then get your How to Catch Pokemon tutorial, except I think it was optional in red, blue, and yellow. Uh, then you start your journey. Yeah, it was. Uh, um, um, the fact is, the actual Oaks 
parcel was actually a Pokedex, and I think Pokeballs as well, wasn't it? So it was like, why are you doing this? Just, you know, you're literally just making us walk up through the cities um, to come back down to actually receive some items that could be instantly given to us. Yeah. So it cut a lot. It cut a lot of time out. Well, that's all we have for those. So if you have anything that you'd like to see or not like to see in Pokemon X and Y, uh, put those in the comments below. And I've been Double Through One. I've been Pokeartist. And I'll see you guys next time. See ya.